Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the wonderful IIEA webinar mar marking the 10th anniversary of the Pacific Alliance. I want to thank the IIEA very particularly for inviting me to be part of this very select gathering of experts about the Pacific Alliance and experts on their own countries, the ambassadors from Colombia, current president of the Pacific Alliance, Ambassador Patricia Cortez, Miguel Malfalvon, the ambassador of Mexico to Ireland, Ambassador Ana Maria Sanchez de Rios, uh, ambassador of Peru to Ireland, and Ambassador Carla Serassi, ambassador of Chile to Ireland, and my dear friend and colleague, Director General Brian Glynn, who is currently director for Latin for the Americas in the European External Action Service. This is a very special occasion, and I am delighted to facilitate the discussion, which I think you will find immensely interesting. The uh, order of today is, is straightforward. Those of you who are familiar with these excellent IIEA webinar events, we shall have a series of presentations from in very informed guests. Brian Glynn shall kick off for the External Action Service, and then Siri Atom, each ambassador, Ambassador Cortez, as president of the Pacific Alliance, shall speak first, followed by Mexico, Peru, and Chile, giving their unique perspectives on the importance of the Pacific Alliance for regional cooperation and global well-being and security. Brian, obviously, will give us the perspective of the importance of the Alliance for the foreign policy of the European U Union in the region and the opportunity that represents for Ireland to engage even further through this dynamic new network. The uh, house rules here are slightly changed because now the IIEA, which has uh, thrived on confidential and Chatham House uh, in-house discussions pre-COVID-19, but as we have moved online, we have required these to be more public events and necessarily there is no off the record or Chatham House rules apply. Therefore, we would ask speakers to identify who they are and to know that this is a public event and they should reflect on that in their comments and remarks. We will um, invite you and really encourage you to ask your questions through the chat function. And I will be happy to, to offer your questions and reflections to the speakers in the questions and answers session towards the end. So we hope a good mixture, 50-50 at least, of presentation and question and dynamic dialogue. My hope at the end of this session is that you will be enthused about the wonderfully uh, talented ambassadors we have from the Pacific Alliance here in Ireland, and that you would consider engaging more directly and supporting Ireland's burgeoning and developing relationship with the region, be you a business person, a student, a diplomat, or tourists looking for an amazing uh, post-COVID uh, visit to the region, which is a fascinating part of the world. Without further ado, I would like to invite Ambassador Brian Glynn, our former ambassador in, in Brazil and currently Director General of the External Action Service to present his uh, reflections on the Pacific Alliance. And ambassadors, with your permission, I shall introduce you individually before your presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Barbara. I'd uh, very much like to thank the organizers, the Institute and the four embassies for inviting me to this event. <clears throat> this is my first trip to Ireland since uh, Christmas. Uh, and of course it has to be a virtual one or I would have spent 14 days in a, in a hotel looking forward to having a real visit to Ireland to see you and the colleagues uh, uh, in the summertime uh, when everything will be better for, for us all. I'm delighted to be with you today to discuss relations between the European Union and the Pacific uh, Alliance. My sincere congratulations first of all to the Pacific Alliance on its 10th anniversary and to the ambassadors of the four countries. My congratulations also to the Institute as it celebrates its 30th birthday uh, next month. The EU High Representative uh, Josep Borrell has also delivered a message on the occasion of the 10th anniversary uh, of uh, the Pacific Alliance. And uh, he made reference to the EU's close ties to the Alliance. And I'd kindly ask the technical team to share this short video with you now. 
Excelencias, estimados participantes, queridos amigos y amigas, permítanme transmitirles mis felicitaciones a la Alianza del Pacífico por este su décimo aniversario. La Unión Europea tiene una gran amistad y profundos lazos históricos, culturales y económicos con los cuatro países que componen la Alianza, con Chile, con Colombia, con Perú y con México. Desde Europa, compartimos la visión de la Alianza sobre la integración regional, el comercio abierto y un crecimiento sostenible. Hay una voluntad común de aprovechar el marco de la declaración conjunta entre la Unión Europea y la Alianza para lograr una transición verde y digital en beneficio de ambas regiones. Esperamos que nuestra cooperación contribuya a hacer de la Alianza del Pacífico todavía más atlántica. Enhorabuena y muchas gracias. Very good. Well, I'd like to take up some of the themes that the High Representative mentioned, and I'd like to center my intervention, if I may, on three simple questions. Why is the Pacific Alliance important for the EU? What can this partnership bring to both regions? And where can we go from, from here? Why is the Alliance important for us? Well, it's proven its worth as a successful regional integration initiative over the past decade. Principally, it's gone further than others in the region in taking concrete steps to advance regional integration. It has a high level of ambition on establishing a regional digital market, greening its economy, and mainstreaming gender across the policy agenda, to name just a few uh, examples. Advancing regional initiatives is not an easy endeavor when governments need to cope with a difficult agenda at home, socially and economically, or when faced with the perfect storm created by the COVID pandemic. So far, the Pacific Alliance has shown great resilience and an ability to place common interest and pragmatism above political affinity. It's not surprising that it has attracted significant international attention. For the EU as a whole, the Pacific Alliance is one of our closest and most like-minded partners in Latin America. It gathers four of the countries with which the EU has very strong ties. The agreements that the EU has in place with all of them are an expression of mature political and economic relations. And from an economic point of view, and I think this is something that is worth uh, stating, the four countries represent 50% of the EU's total trade with Latin America and the Caribbean. And the Pacific Alliance is also an important destination for investment, concentrating more than a third of the region's FDI uh, flow. Beyond the sum of the relations we have with its members, the Pacific Alliance is a key partner at a time when other major uh, regional initiatives are stalled. Uh, here I've mentioned the fact that we've not been able to have an EU CELAC summit in uh, six years, for example. The, uh, we have adopted a flexible approach and the European Union is deepening its relations with those regional groups that are willing and able to step up engagement on shared goals uh, and the Pacific Alliance is one of those. So what can this partnership bring? The potential for cooperation that was mentioned by the High Representative has been a driver of the joint declaration that the EU and the Alliance uh, signed in 2019 under the Peruvian pro-temporary presidency of the Alliance. And it helped place the spotlight on a number of areas and offered a stronger framework for future engagement. Uh, the declaration was endorsed by all EU member states, out of which 20 are observers to the Pacific Alliance. And I know Ireland hopes to become the 21st observer of the Pacific Alliance. And although it's not yet developed to its full capacity, cooperation with EU countries is increasing. And events such as the Cooperation Forum, which was held last November, fuel this dialogue. There's a lot of potential for the EU and the Pacific uh, Alliance to join forces uh, for building back better our economies after the COVID pandemic. Unfortunately, as we know, the COVID crisis has hit Latin America harder and longer than anywhere else in the world. 
and the Pacific Alliance countries are not sheltered from that, and they've suffered uh, profound damages that will take many years to, to repair. At the last EU uh, Latin America Caribbean ministerial meeting that the Pacific Alliance countries attended in Berlin of last year, there was a clear shared ambition to work together towards a sustainable recovery. And this involves common efforts making our economies greener and more digital. And unsurprisingly, those two priorities, green and digital, are also driving the EU Pacific Alliance uh, cooperation. In the area of digital transformation, uh, we can work together on leveling the playing field for digital companies and investors by harmonizing rules for the digital market and by adopting common standards. We can also discuss how to make the most of new opportunities for digitalizing government services or having more secure online environments. Also, um, how to close the digital divide and to address digital poverty. Uh, the EU's experience in building our own single uh, digital market can also be valuable for the Pacific Alliance as it progresses with its own digital integration plans. And we're happy to see that the Pacific Alliance is ready to launch its own digital strategy, and we're ready to support its implementation at technical level. Contacts have been established already between our teams of experts in the digital field. They're hoping to dive deeper on issues like digital government, electronic identification, cybersecurity, or platforms regulation. And with the Pacific Alliance and more broadly with the uh, Latin America Caribbean region, cooperation on digital issues is easier than it is uh, with other parts of the world. We have a similar way of seeing digital transformation. It needs to serve our people and also, of course, to respect our values. The second area that we can achieve uh, significant progress is on the green transition. Uh, the Pacific Alliance countries are key partners for the EU in the push towards a green and sustainable development plan. They're home to impressive biodiversity, as we know, and have enormous potential for renewable energies and natural resources. We can and should do more on the multilateral front by working together towards ambitious commitments in the global multilateral framework on climate and the environment. Uh, building convergence between us will be on the agenda ahead of the important events later this year, including the COP on, on climate change. Thank you very much, uh, Brian. I'm very sad to say that as you were moving to your future agenda, um, your stream has been lost by us. And uh, Patricia, with your permission, I wish to continue our discussion and move now to introduce you to, my, uh, to the audience, which is extensive. Ladies and gentlemen, Ambassador Patricia Cortez Ortiz is an accomplished diplomat, director for the Americas, an expert on matters to do with Venezuela, and served in the flagship Colombian embassy in Washington, DC. A great friend of Ireland, she holds the distinction of being the first resident ambassador of Colombia, having been designated as such by uh, her late uh, lately departed Foreign Minister, a great friend of Ireland. Um, Patricia, I hand you the floor as Chair of the Pacific Alliance to address our audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. I would like to express my sincere appreciation to all of you at the IIEA who help us making this event come together. To uh, as well to express uh, uh, my gratitude, our gratitude to High Representative Joseph Borrell for this, his words. Of course, to Director Brian Glynn, to Ambassador, to you, Ambassador Barbara Jones, and my colleague ambassadors of Mexico, Peru, and Chile in this panel, and to all the audience who, who are attending. This event is a clear example of the IIEA's global vision and its engagement with the different regions around the world and a way to enrich the debate on the opportunities for Ireland at the international level. This week, we commemorate 10 years of existence of the Pacific Alliance or Alianza del Pacifico. We are very proud that today's discussion is part of this celebration in our global approach. 
we'll start off by highlighting why the Pacific Alliance has been the most successful story of integration in Latin America in the last decade, and the opportunities of the engagement for observers, observer states, and of course, with the European Union. The Pacific Alliance started in 2011 with a pragmatic vision, outward looking and very ambitious goals for integration of the four member countries, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Peru. We all share principles and values on democracy, rule of law, respect of, for human rights, economic openness, respect for multilateralism. We, and we work based on our consensus decision-making. We all have a coast in the Pacific Ocean, that's why our name comes from, and we all have a free trade agreement among us. The main goal has been moving towards the free movement of goods, services, capital, and people. In our 10-year celebration, the Pacific Alliance is working in deepening its current integration, being more open to our citizens, becoming more global, and fostering connections and entrepreneurship as part of our strategic vision for 2030. The Alliance is a dynamic initiative to attract foreign investment, create export platforms for the global market with high potential and business projection with competitive advantages for international businesses. Miguel Malfavon, the Mexican ambassador, will develop further on this topic. As we work to promote further growth development and competitiveness. We also focus on achieving greater well-being, overcoming social economic inequality and promoting, and promoting social inclusion among us by fostering people-to-people -people connections, study exchanges, sustainable tourism, entrepreneurship based on cooperation among the member states and the observer states as well. I would like to ask the IIEA, they can present the first slide, please. As you can see, the Pacific, why the Pacific Alliance has cut out the attention of the world? Well, I think there are this information gives you the idea of, 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 of the reason. We are the four countries of the group that represent the eighth economy in the world, more than 40% of the GDP in Latin America and the Caribbean. In 2019, 56 million tourism per year we, we receive in the countries of the Pacific Alliance. And of course, on the size of, of our inhabitants, 230 million by 2019. Thank you. You can take this slide, thank you. Uh, currently, there are 59 observer states from all continents, more than 20 countries from the European Union, 26 OECD countries, including the US, the UK, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and also Asian countries such as China, India, South Korea, just to name a few. They all share the principles and the objectives of the Pacific Alliance. As Director Brian Glynn uh, is, was explaining and will explain further, the Pacific Alliance has a special relationship with the European Union in which we recognize the support of the EU countries. We also have an engagement with ASEAN and we are working on a re-engagement with the APEC economies. Currently, there are six candidates in the category of associate member, which are Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Korea, Singapore, and Ecuador. Ecuador is also at the prospect of becoming full member of the Pacific Alliance, which is conditioned to the outcome of the current negotiations. In 10 years, the Pacific Alliance has adopted key measures to promote regional integration, including significant advances in the liberalization of, uh, of trading goods and 92% of tariffs, the creation of a joint platform for the stock markets, joint diplomatic and trade undertakings, particularly in Asia, free movement of people among our countries, numerous social achievements such as the Alliance Scholarship Program, and nine shared embassies schemes. We have a concrete example here of the Pacific Alliance in Dublin, as Colombia opened its embassy in 2018 as part of a sharing agreement with Mexico under the Pacific Alliance. Can you please put the, present the second slide? We are working currently in 30 areas. I just name a few, but they range from trade facilitation, customs, finance, tourism, cooperation, environment, mobility of people, gender equality, 
education, digital agenda, and, and many others that, that, that I highlighted there. All our governments are fully involved in implementing the specific goals and the working plan on, and on the Pacific Alliance in this. Um, the Peruvian ambassador and the Chilean ambassador will develop, develop further in advancing of the advances on, on these areas later in, in this panel. Thank you. In terms of promotion agencies, we hold on an annual basis a business matchmaking event, a forum on entrepreneurship, a tourism matchmaking event, a high-level business meeting parallel to presidential summit, which this year will take place in Colombia as we currently hold the pro tempore presidency. Besides the full involvement of the governments, we also count on the Pacific Alliance Business Council with presence of key companies from the four member states. And this council provides recommendations to the governments in, in a range of topics. We also have the support of international organizations for the implementation in our areas of work, such as the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, the UN Economic Mission for Latin America and the Caribbean, ECLAC, the Development Bank of Latin American CAF, and the OECD as well. The Pacific Alliance engagement with observer states is mainly through cooperation or collaboration projects of mutual interest, such as digitalization, SMEs and entrepreneurship, sustainable tourism, vocational education and training, and gender equality, among others. We hold a cooperation forum and with, between the member states and the observer states, and we are working in defining wider sources, sources of financing and developing innovative modalities of cooperation. Ireland is not yet an observer state of the Pacific Alliance since it has not requested, but we understand this, there is an, a, a possible progress on, on that decision. For the time being, the cooperation could be all the work with the Pacific Alliance could be directed through the European Union and the Pacific Alliance scheme. Given the Global Ireland Initiative, we are convinced that the Pacific Alliance will be a fantastic opportunity for Ireland in terms of the diversification, the engagement in economic and social cooperation between Ireland and the member countries of the Pacific Alliance who share the same values. Thank you so much. Uh, Barbara and all of you. Thank you very much, Patricia. It's quite clear that this is a, a subject very dear to your heart. The enthusiasm, dare I say it, diplomatic passion that I hear for the vision and the founding vision and the expansion of this wonderful integration network. It comes right through. So thank you for that. And I know that as I introduce my dear friend Miguel Malfavon, the same enthusiasm that I saw in Mexico when the Pacific Alliance actually held one of its meetings in Puerto Vallarta when I was ambassador there very recently. And Miguel, it's a great pleasure to be passing the floor to you. Colleagues on the call, I would say, we have amongst us one of the best known ambassadors in Mexico. As former uh, Deputy Chief of Protocol and very active in the presidency and the presidential establishment of the United States of Mexico, Miguel Malfavon is the name that gets you through all of the doors. Everybody knows him and respects him and why. Not only is he a very, 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 very a good friend of Ireland, which makes it very special to us, but also it means that he is a distinguished diplomat. We see that in service, which reigns from multilateral assignments in Geneva, right through to uh, um, Sweden, South Africa. So the experience that you have brought, Miguel, to your assignment here in Ireland, I'm sure we will now see reflected in your presentation. You have the floor, Miguel. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much for that very warm uh, presentation. Um, I would like to thank also the uh, certainly the uh, IIEA for, for this opportunity to talk about the uh, Pacific Alliance as one of the uh, most uh, significant trading blocks in the world. Um, I would like just to uh, go a little bit further on, on uh, the comments made by my colleague Patricia Cortez from, from Colombia. Um, the Alliance is uh, an initiative of uh, regional integration that is moving gradually, but uh, in a very continuously way towards a free mobility of goods, services, resources, and people. This is a region open for business, and it's in a very short period of time since its uh, conception, 
it has actually achieved a very, very, very degree of success. Let me try to put it in perspective. In 2016, 16, five years ago, members, member countries of the alliance adopted an, uh, an agreement on cutting tariffs on 92% of their common trade. Uh, and the remaining 8% of those uh, goods uh, will be phased out in the following years. According to pre, certain pre-pandemic figures, together, uh, the four members of the Pacific Alliance represent 40% of Latin Americans' GDP. With a relatively modest growth, 2.8%. We can see it on the first uh, slide that I have uh, over there. Um, this, this, uh, Four countries count, count mainly for the 53% uh, of uh, Latin Americans' uh, total foreign trade. Even though the, uh, the alliance has uh, primarily looked into economic integration, uh, it has also found itself um, strengthening uh, connections with the rest of the world. Um, certainly a core objective of the Pacific Alliance. And uh, probably this is what uh, distinguishes from uh, other uh, regional integration processes in, in Latin America is that it serves as a platform for economic and commercial cooperation with other regions as well. Um, it is true that uh, the Alliance itself, um, its initial goal was to increase um, competitiveness in addition to seeking expanded trade with uh, the Asia Pacific region. Um, we were looking into creating a regional gateway to Asia. But soon, um, through our, ex our extensive uh, free trade network, we realized that actually uh, the alliance could also go further and reach out to other regions. With North America, for example, we have a long-standing relationship, increasing collaborations and, and connections with Europe and particularly the European Union. The alliance have uh, reaffirmed their interest in a stronger relationship providing a solid foundation for talks between the two groups. Um, as uh, Brian mentioned it before, uh, memoranda of understanding and joint declarations have, signed, have been signed uh, in order to provide a framework to strengthen cooperation and dialogue for the coming years. This dialogue has already identified multiple areas of common interest, um, where there is a clear potential to deepen cooperation. Such areas include uh, regional economic and financial uh, integration, digital strategies, the fight against climate change and the promotion of green growth, the facilitation of movement of, pe of people, but also as well, innovation, science and technology. Um, but what is the, the relevance of the Pacific Alliance for Ireland as an economic partner? We can see it in the following uh, slide. Um, the Pacific Alliance represents um, an opportunity for Irish trade diversification. According just to the last uh, year figures from 2020, 70%, um, two thirds of Ireland's uh, foreign trade with Latin America, it's concentrated in these four countries. Um, the region, one of the main strengths of this region is precisely our manufacturing capacity. You can see 80% of the manufacturers produced in Latin America are exported by members of the Pacific Alliance. The data of bilateral flows of trade in goods, um, both uh, at the uh, product and sector level, together with the, uh, the study of uh, trade in services, as well as uh, direct uh, foreign investment, um, reflect that the, um, there is uh, economic complementarity between Ireland and the, the countries that form part of the Pacific Alliance. Um, there is a big possibility uh, open for developing, producing, and generating value chains in sectors such as pharmaceuticals, uh, machinery, uh, medium and high uh, manufacturing, agri-foods, organic products, chemical sectors, ITCs, etc. Um, let me just finish uh, by saying that uh, members of the Alliance have human capital and with a young and talented workforce. We are open economies uh, in a very competitive uh, environment and, uh, and growing fast. The region is transforming itself. 
the alliance has um, the perfect opportunity for Ireland to build bridges between our two regions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miguel. A great image. Bridges, not walls. We're into bridge. We're all bridge builders, and what a lovely image to conclude on. Uh, Brian Glynn, uh, our Director General for Europe, is back online. But because he's such a brilliant ambassador, he is suggesting, Anna Maria, that we would uh, defer to you as our next speaker, and he will be our final resume speaker. And that is entirely appropriate because uh, the ambassador of Peru has a distinguished uh, former minister for foreign affairs of Peru, a distinguished ambassador to Ireland, has a uh, joins the stellar colleagues with extensive diplomatic achievement. And in one case, Anna Marie, if I may, as a, as a feminist and a woman diplomat, salute the fact that you are a, an exemplar of being those very special women who are firsts. So you were the first female career diplomat in Peru to be appointed Minister for Foreign Affairs. And we treasure that in Ireland because it's a great inspiration for other women diplomats that we might follow in your footsteps. And thank you so much for joining us today and to offer your perspective of Peru's uh, commitment and vision for the future development of the Pacific Alliance. Thank you, Anna Maria. Thank you, Barbara, for your warm introduction. Thank you, EIA, -E -E, <clears throat> for the opportunity for, for us. In recent years, digital economy integration has become a fundamental element to continue the progress of the deep integration strategy of the Pacific Alliance. In 2000, 16 in Puerto Varas, Chile, the Pacific Alliance Summit formed the Digital Agenda Subgroup to build a roadmap that would reduce the digital divide between the member states. This was in accordance with the telecommunication and electronic commerce chapters of the commercial protocol of the Pacific Alliance. This roadmap was jointly built with the private sector and presented during the following summit held in 2017 in Cali, Colombia. The Cali Summit also saw the creation of the Digital Agenda Group to promote the construction of a regional digital market. Then in 2018, during the summit in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, the president approved the strategic vision for 2030 with a view to make the Pacific Alliance more integrated, more global, more connected, and more citizen-oriented, with the achievable targets in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Regarding a more connected Pacific Alliance, the country members are seeking that citizens and companies be digitally connected through more effective channels of communication. To this end, the Pacific Alliance will consolidate a digital regional market by 2030, incorporating ICT in its production processes, thereby closing the digital divide and achieving a world-class infrastructure to facilitate, encourage, and protect investments. This will also motivate a greater need for human capital trained in the use of new technology. For example, boosting the presence of software developers in the total population in member states, which is currently between 0.09% and 0.23%, considerably behind OECD levels. Therefore, the scarce supplies of specialized human capital for the digital economy in the Pacific Alliance represents an area ripe for growth and development in the digital field. 
Although the pandemic halted much of the economic and social activities, it also accelerated processes of technological implementation and hastened innovation in the digital sphere, such as electronic commerce, telework, and teleeducation. These are all being considered in the deliberation in progress within the Pacific Alliance. During the last summit held in Chile in 2020, the president agreed on the need to implement the roadmap for the Pacific Alliance regional digital market with a vision to create an enabling environment for the change of goods, products, and services through media, while promoting the digital economy in member countries to generate new sources of growth and productivity. The strategy of the roadmap of the regional digital market consists of three points. The first is to develop a more robust digital infrastructure. This implies accelerating the development and adoption of high-speed networks, improving regional interconnection, harmonizing rooming, reaching more places by promoting the inclusion and deployment of new protocols that allow the connection of more devices. The second is to improve regulation by reducing barriers to electronic commerce, improving technical and legal interoperability, promoting only trust, privacy, data protection, and cybersecurity, as well as analyzing the importance of intellectual property and trade facilitation in the digital environment. The third is to develop the digital economy by identifying gaps in entrepreneurship, motivating electronic commerce, supporting the, the industry in the use of new technology, and incentivizing the incorporation of women and the generation of talent and digital skills. Next Friday, on the occasion of the 10 year anniversary of the Pacific Alliance, the president of Colombia, Ivan Duque, in his capacity as president pro tempore, will launch the regional digital market roadmap, <clears throat> thus demonstrating the political commitment present at the highest level for its ex execution. Then member countries will identify the areas of work that need to receive cooperation for the observer states and international organization. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna Marie. And I really do welcome the, um, the, the presentation of the range and the depth of the, the work that is underway and uh, how exciting that uh, President Duque in his capacity as president in office will um, We'll, we'll be launching that next week. We should look out for it and make sure that all of us tweet and make sure that it gets good attention here as a follow-up. And we do want to encourage in the IEA people to be uh, using their online platforms to publicize this event and your great work and your country's great work to promote regional integration. Um, Carla, um, it is a great honor uh, to introduce to uh, the audience our ambassador to Ireland uh, of Chile. Uh, extensive experience uh, as a diplomat uh, is, the, is the price of entry to this exclusive uh, club today. And I think in your case, Carla, your experience as a multilateralist is what stands out, an expert on the, on the issues of multilateralism based on your time in UN, uh, in New York and in Geneva, and then in the Organization of American States in Washington, D.C., um, before you did all this diplomacy stuff, you were a journalist and we're delighted to see that you have a Master in Public Administration from our favourite university in, in Boston, the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, very close to our hearts, the Kennedys, uh, because of the association with Wexford, where I'm, where I'm 
and uh, not sitting today, but normally do sit uh, remote working. But very, very pleased to hand the floor to Carla and to get the perspective of Chile, where we have recent open, recently opened our uh, new embassy in Santiago de Chile with our brilliant ambassador, Brian uh, Paul Gleason and his team there. So delighted to hear the perspective of Chile. Carla, you have the floor. Thank you, Barbara, and our appreciation to IEA for this great opportunity. Thanks to Brian Glynn and my colleagues in the Ambassador of Colombia, Mexico, and Peru. The Pacific Alliance has worked in strategic areas that have brought multiple benefits with citizens. I will address four of them, gender, environment, education, and academic mobility. The First, the Gender Technical Group, which was created during 2015, aiming to include the gender perspective as a cross cutting element within the work of the Pacific Alliance. For that, several tools were created. Also, during the last six years, they have been working in successful initiatives. The Grooming Entrepreneurs Community, which has promoted the economic empowerment of women. This virtual space is allowing them to connect directly and explore opportunities, exchange relevant information to strengthen their business and leadership skills through online events and courses. They use the Connect America's platform created by the IBEB to be in touch. Two Southern business women also participated in a study called Radiography of the Participation of Grooming Entrepreneurs in Foreign Trade, which provided valuable information on their company's profile and the barriers they face in their activities. An update of this study is being developed to better understand how the pandemic is affecting them. During the last summit held in Santiago, Chile, the Presidential Declaration on Gender Equality was signed accompanied by a roadmap for the autonomy and economic empowerment of women of the PA. Work is underway on an implementation work plan for this roadmap to initiate concrete actions through the adoption of public policies and joint actions with the technical bodies of the bloc, the private sector, strategic partners, and international organizations. Second, the Environment and Green Growth Technical Group, which was created in 2016 with the objective of building a space for dialogue between PA governments and the private sector for the development and implementation of an agenda that promotes sustainability in the Alliance and leads actions towards green growth, considering the characteristics and reality of each country. Several workshops and seminars have been organized also, the subgroup of measuring, reporting, and verification has been doing strategic work on climate change. First a slide, please. In 2018, the president signed a presidential declaration on sustainable plastic management, committing to work on initiatives towards the integrated management of plastic. Furthermore, at the summit in 2020, the president signed a roadmap towards sustainable plastic management aim to implement that presidential declaration through adoption of joint actions with the private sector, strategic partners, and international organization. The group is developing an implementation work plan for this roadmap. Thank you. You can take the slide. The, the next group is the educational technical group, which is aims to strengthen the ties of education integration through cooperation, focus on improving the competencies of the citizens and their access to quality education. Next slide, please. The GTE has prioritized its effort in technical vocational education in accordance with the, with the agendas of the member states. Since 2014, they have been working on developing human capital and boost productivity productivity and competitiveness with a view to overcome socioeconomic inequality and advancing on social inclusion policies. Some relevant progress achieved in, in this area includes communication campaigns, as the one that you can see in the slide, to enhance the value of technical vocational education. Also, the PA has been working in generating regional cooperation mechanisms among this member to establish a common reference for students and future labor mobility based on the progress made in the ongoing construction of a Pacific Alliance qualifications framework. There is also an interesting instrument rep repository of practices, which is a compilation of examples of what is working well within the Alliance. Thank you. Oh, next slide, please. In the current scenario of the pandemic, the focus has been on cooperation work. 
Chile is leading the implementation of the project and strengthening the digital competencies of teachers and school principals in elementary education, and also the Pacific Alliance English Net Network. The first project tends to strengthen the skills, capacities of teachers and principals in the mediated use of te digital technologies through the online educational work. They will be able to advance and create innovative options in the processes of integral development and learning of students in the current COVID-19 emergency, and also work in strategies to face possible new situation of subsequent confinement. The second project is focused on developing an English strategy with the re regional mechanism. Last year was organized the first meeting with the collaboration of the British Council Office in Chile and the IDB. Two short workshops were held. One focused on the challenges of English language public policies at school and higher education levels, and another on the challenges identified to develop a cooperation strategy in this area. And finally, the student academic uh, mobility platform was launched in 2013. It is one of the most successful experiences of the PA. Its main objective is to contribute to the formation of human capital through the academic exchange of undergraduate and doctoral students, as well as teaching staff and researchers from higher education institutions. Each year, 400 scholarships are awarded, 100 for each country. To date, more than 3,000 have participated, with the years 2000 and 2021 20, being exceptional years due to the pandemic, which has led to suspending and cancellations due to the closing of orders. The platform promotes decentralization and equal opportunities for all young people in our countries. And it's very commendable that the majority of women and students from regions, not just capitals, as you just saw in the slide, have participated in the program. Along the years, more than 400 universities have joined and important partnerships have been established among these institutions. These are some of the main Pacific Alliance initiatives in direct benefit of the citizen that we wanted to share with you and women available in case you need additional information. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much, Carla. Wow, I mean, what an amazing outreach in terms of the, the broad sweep into civic society. Uh, definitely a very important democratic basis for, for the work of the governments going forward. Now, I'm going to, with before we turn to questions and answers, Brian, I'm going to cycle back to Brussels and uh, to uh, give you the opportunity for, uh, for give us the opportunity to, to hear from you uh, as you move towards the final section of your presentation. Thank you, Brian. Thank you uh, very much, Barbara. I think it's uh, the golden rule of our times is if you mention digital transformation in the previous sentence, your connection will go in the next. So apologies for that. Uh, it's probably quite useful actually that uh, the colleagues and masters in Dublin have been able to put some flesh on the bones of what I was talking about. Uh, and you can all see for yourselves uh, that this is, um, uh, this is a body of substance and it's one that the European Union wants to, to do more with. I really only had one point that I wanted to make to, to conclude in the where we go next and it's essentially about deeper political engagement with the Pacific Alliance. Um, last year we had an opportunity to have a first meeting at senior officials level and we had great plans to ensure that there would be a ministerial meeting that of course uh, couldn't happen because of COVID. So using the phrase appended to every aspiration in 2020, 2021, when circumstances permit, uh, we are looking forward to having a real ministerial engagement between the High Representative and the Ministers of Foreign Affairs of the Pacific Alliance. As I said, at technical level, we've achieved some good progress since we signed the declaration. Uh, but uh, we're now working together with the Colombian pro tempore presidency to take more initiatives forward. Um, maybe then in conclusion, we're in a, an international context that we all know is very difficult. Um, the European Union stated ambition is to be seen as a global actor and a reliable partner. And that requires us to seek out partnerships such as the one we have with the Pacific Alliance, uh, but we're not doing this out of altruism or philanthropy. It's a, it's a partnership that we value, but it's also a partnership that needs to be further nourished. And 
you know, we're, we all know the challenges we face as we navigate our way out of the current pandemic and uh, the necessity for us all to ensure that the next recovery is a green recovery. The one thing that we do know is that we, we can't achieve those ambitious goals alone and we need partners like the Pacific Alliance. So deepening our political dialogue and our political engagement with the Pacific Alliance will definitely help us to realize the true potential of the partnership. And speaking with my EU hat on, I very much look forward uh, to Ireland joining the other uh, 20 EU member states who are observers uh, to the Alliance and look forward to working in close partnership uh, with you all and happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Brian. It's, it's very kind of you. I will never use the word DT ever again on online uh, when I'm working with colleagues on such an important discussion. So I've learned another thing from you about the magic words to avoid. But on the point about the opportunity for Ireland, uh, James McIntyre, who succeeded you as director for the Americas in the Department of Foreign Affairs, was briefing me over the weekend and he highlighted the very firm commitment in our overarching uh, policy strategy for global our global foreign policy that we are to become uh, to apply to become an observer member of the Pacific Alliance and I think that that is certainly something colleagues in Dublin today you have stimulated by your uh, passionate presentation and very comprehensive uh, presentations of the, um, the the breadth and the depth of the ambition and how how much work is underway which is directly relevant to the values and interests of Ireland as an EU member state as Brian mentions. We have uh, very very little time uh, for questions because uh, and there are many and I wanted to beg the audience's indulgence therefore by selecting just two and I want to ask all ambassadors to be brief and to comment uh, as you wish on this. One relates to the uh, sort of echoing Brian's description of the foreign policy relationship and political engagement. Would to ask you, how would you characterize the opportunity for the Pacific Alliance with the Biden administration? Patricia, would you like to take that question? Lead off. And, and and really brief is it is it is it a positive is it is it going to is it going to be a positive factor do you think in the future planning? Thank you, Barbara. And uh, I think the U.S. actually was one of the first countries to be uh, to apply for for the status as an observer status. And the way of the engagement is being through of, again as as a cooperation. There are some particular areas I understand there are, there were. With a strong focus on the, on the on the trade and economy, as all of our countries actually, we have a free trade agreement with the U.S. and uh, and then some of the areas on trade facilitation. I think there is a, I think in, the, in general the relationship, of course, on it's been well, we try to focus is a bipartisan relationship. So the engagement actually of the of the countries with the Pacific Alliance is not only with the government as well with the US Congress. So we really hope to that there are so many opportunities, for example, on environment, there's a strong focus, of course, what we will see on the general, not only the US around the world on the, on the environment. And we are working strongly on those areas. So those, there will be, of course, many, many opportunities there. But as I say, we've been, there's already a, a current work going on. Thank you very much, Patricia. Do any of the other colleagues want to comment on that point? Please? Just uh, briefly, uh, thank you, Barbara. Miguel, yeah. Just, I think that, uh, I mean, the, uh, the Biden administration has made it uh, quite clear from the very beginning that they are coming back to the multilateralism. And certainly uh, this is one of the areas, not only on trade, but also a very extensive uh, uh, system of uh, sectors, emprendedorism and uh, social issues, labor issues, sustainability. There are many other areas that where we can work together and certainly uh, I think that there is a very very positive uh, uh, trend for, for Latin America and for, for the relation between the two regions. Thank you very much. Could I, could I ask people to comment on the question of, obviously we're seeing a lot of government to government underpinning to the vision. Uh, Francis Jacob is asking here, is, is there a parliamentary tier to the cooperation between your countries in the Pacific Alliance. 
Ana Maria, would you like to comment? Parliamentary cooperation as a as part of the work plan of the Pacific Alliance. Uh, Barbara, if I may. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Actually, in the Pacific Alliance, there is an interparliamentary like uh, commission that is, is, let's say, it's not part of the framework as such. It's not like the government framework of the council. But at the same time, there is like a the business uh, council. There is like an interparliamentary way. It doesn't mean that uh, within the Pacific Alliance we have a parliament. No, no. I mean, it's, that's that's let's yes. say it's different. But there's actually an interparliamentary commission, and they do follow up from the four, from the four countries on what we are engaged in, in the different areas of cooperation. I, I don't know if uh, my colleagues may would like to add Barbara, something there was, else. The, the, the second part of that question as well was how it engages with Eurolat. Um, and I think I can I can come in here. Eurolat Thank is you. essentially um, the main parliamentary body uh, that operates on an EU CELAC basis. So in other words, it's the European Parliament with all the parliaments of uh, the CELAC countries. So there is uh, there's already that overarching. Uh, um, but I don't think that the parliamentary commission, this intermarket parliamentary commission that Patricia has mentioned, has a specific uh, connection with Eurolat yet. But uh, the Pacific Alliance is, of course, a uh, an organisation that is in, in growth mode. And one ten seconds on the um, the US relationship, um, as I also cover that uh, in in my role here. The, the United States has said that it sees the European Union as its partner of first resort. Uh, we've already had uh, Secretary of State Blinken attending the Foreign Affairs Council. We have an EU-US summit taking place in June. Uh, in other words, all of the things that uh, mark the relationship and mark the closeness of the relationship are being put back, to, back together again in the first semester. And one of the areas on which we are having very close contact with the new administration is how we can work together um, with our partners in Latin America, particularly in the area of strengthening democracy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. And certainly this is really the, the, the key challenge uh, facing our world is that as we as we look into the future post COVID-19 to see the immense challenge on the economic front and the immense challenge in terms of trust uh, in our democratic governments that the pandemic creates, but also the fragile state of democracy in the world. So I really want to conclude uh, in, in this regard, with a personal reflection, having had the great honour of being non-resident ambassador to, um, to Peru and Colombia when I was resident ambassador in Chile, is to, to really, really commend the leadership of your governments when it would be easy to, in these days, to turn inwards and to think only around our borders and, and our walls and our individual needs and assert national, nationalism over interdependence. Uh, to be here today celebrating one of the most successful initiatives for regional integration in the world in the teeth of this storm seems to me a great beacon of hope in our shared commitment uh, as, as Ireland with all of your countries, Chile, Chile Peru, Colombia and Mexico, as a European Union state and a belief in the power of diplomacy, the power today illustrated of public diplomacy to explain our democratic goals and ambitions of our governments. And it does remind me as I listened to you and learned so much ambassadors about the depth of the practical in this vision. And it is very much Robert Schuman uh, as we think of the IIEA 30 years in existence, the founding vision of Schuman after the war in Europe was in asserting that peace and solidarity was a practical thing. It's a very practical thing, peace, and, and practical expression for citizens, as we heard, economically, as Miguel said, politically, as Patricia outlined, and as Anna Maria de demonstrated in the transformational technology of the digital, how practical and how inspiring this vision is. I want to thank on behalf of the IIEA and all of the membership uh, who have joined here today and the public who have joined us for the initiative, um, the unique uh, initiative of joining together with four brilliant ambassadors in our diplomatic corps in Dublin, representing the Pacific Alliance 
to do a novel event, which I think has enriched us all. And as somebody who loves, not only appreciates the relationship with Latin America, but loves the relationship between the European Union and Latin America. And in your careful hands of Vice President Borrell, uh, advised by Brian Lynn and my team in DFA in Dublin, James and Fergal and all the team, to thank you most profoundly for your leadership and your efforts today to cast a light on one of the most important regional cooperation initiatives um, and not, not, not properly uh, valued, but much better valued because of your leadership today. So Patricia and Miguel and Anna Maria and Carla, thank you so much. And thank you, Brian, too, and to the team in the IAA. I, on your behalf, I give them thanks as well. I hope everybody keeps safe and that we're looking, looking forward to much better days uh, in all of our countries post-COVID-19. Thank you very much, everybody. See you again soon. Bye-bye.